Hi everyone, welcome to the QA Ops channel. I'm Rafael Lima. And in this video, we will continue from the previous video where we had two tests, one get and another post. And, but there, we did it to do some refactoring there. So we're going to start doing that refactoring right now. So if you haven't watched that videos, I'm going to, that video, I'm going to post uh, here up up here in the in this video and also in the description and at the end of the video so you can find so you can actually go from the beginning and and see what I did there and, and you're going to be able to keep it up better right so let's start by getting the branch I already have the code here so I have if I remain remind you of the branches that we have we have a English branch right this is the second video that we did and I'm going to do git checkout on the master, on the English master branch. So if I open my IntelliJ here, so this is what we had, right? So one of the things that we checked was the URL was not, was not okay. Uh, the body was also not okay. So let's start cleaning up by going through the URL. The first thing is that this page here this is on the URL string, it, it, it's sort of like a variable. And we don't need this here, right? It's, it's not that readable. But one thing that I just uh, remember was one, one good practice that you should do once you start coding is run all the tests that you got. So this way you're going to make sure that as soon as you got new code, it's working on your machine. So any failure from now on, I know it's something that I introduced and not, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to be losing time thinking if it was me or if it was already there and then I'm going to try to troubleshoot, right? So going back here, the first thing that we're going to do is remove this to be more readable. So uh, rest assured has a, a possibility a method called uh, params that it takes uh, two positions, right? And two arguments, one is the actual variable, which is page. And the second is the value of that variable, which is two, right? And now I can remove this. So I'm going to execute the test now. And it passed, right? We, we are not that sure. So let's force a failure and it failed because we, we were expecting, it was expecting one, but it was two, right? So this is exactly, exactly what we wanted. So this is the first thing that we, we can do here, right? The other thing is the actual URL. This URL is hard coded, right? And I don't want, I don't want to, I don't want to do that because I want to be flexible on changing that URL as we already discussed. If you haven't seen, uh, my previous video, then I'm going to post it here uh, on a card and on a description and at the end of the video. Right. I can create on RestAssure a, ba a uh, base URI. See, it's already here as a RestAssure solution. And when I import this, it's already going to import RestAssure base URI. And I can give it this content here. I also can give the base path, which is a slash API. You can actually see the implementation of this by holding command or on a Mac, on a control, on a Windows. And you're going to be able to go into the implementation. You can see some details and some comments. And now I can get rid of this. And I also can get rid of this. So the magic is that rest assured is going to, and I put here just the endpoint, which is users. And rest assured is going to uh, do everything that we just did uh, by ourselves. It's going to put together the base URI with base path and with whatever other path that I put here. So if I execute the test, this test, I'm doing Control Shift R to execute the test, whatever my cursor is, and it passed. 
So that's great. Now I can change this to this one is just the slash user. And I can run this in the same shortcut. Control Shift R and it executed too. Great. So I already cleaned up. It's it's much better. Any test that I that I that I need now, you, I just need to use the the endpoint, the specific endpoint for that test. Right. So another thing that we we talk about <coughs> on last video, <coughs> excuse me, was the body. The body is not is not that great, right? The, the way that it looks is not that great. So we first going to try to refactor a little, right? Uh, but before that, let's create a commit. So I do have already commits here. So I'm going to add, I'm going to go ahead and rename this file because it's, it's not good either. So I'm going to use user test as renaming. Great. Uh, before I create a commit, so let 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 refactor that first. Commit dash m. So let me add first, and I want to add uh, this file. So I'm going to put the dot, and it's already renamed, already figured out. So I'm going to do git commit dash m, and I'm going to say I want a what did I do? I Set up REST Azure Base Path and Base Path for all tests. Great. Cool. So one of the things that we're going to do, if you look at the at the test, at the, the system here that we are testing. What is a list of user we're going to create? A, this is the post one, right? So we want to change this. So what is the create one? The create is creating a user and needs a name and a job of the user, which means that this is my domain. This is my, my, this is my user and I needed that for whatever I'm doing, either if it's a automation or, or the system itself. But this is my domain. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a file, a package, sorry. So right click here on API, new package. And I'm going to create a package called domain. Since I created a package called domain, I'm going to create a package called test. So this time I'm going to hold command N or control N for Windows. And I'm going to create test. And I'm going to hold and click and, and drag here. So just make sure that whenever you're in naming, you, you, you stick to the pattern of whatever framework that you are using, right? Java already knows because it's on my SRC, on my source and test. And you can, you can see here by the color coding and the icon that's already figured out this is my test. And it's going to run any test that has the annotation at test. But if you are doing Python or if you are doing Ruby or, or other framework that uses more a uh, pattern instead of a configuration, it's, it's going to need some specific things. So if you're using unit tests in Python, the test need to start with test because there is no annotation. So, uh, it's actually called padronization over configurations, right? So you're going to, it's going to follow a pattern. So in Python, it needs to have test in the beginning. Otherwise, it does not know it is a test. That's not the case in Java here. Well, I can put whatever I want inside the test that has the annotation test that's going to run. So going back here, I created a, so I'm, I already did a commit, but I'm going to do another commit because I changed here, I renamed Java test and it got another rename, which is the move, right? I moved and it's talking about the identify as a renaming. So I'm going to say git commit dash m move test to tests to the test package. 
опасно. Great. What do I have here? I don't know. Let's check. Oh, there is. That's the the package too. So I should have. Uh, what's that again? This some API. Oh, this is the package. Should be there. It's not only the rename, right? The file itself needs to have that annotation too. So I'm going to do git commit dash dash amend, which is going to get this missing file or this missing change and it's going to put in the previous commit. So it's going to, you can see that the exactly same message that we just created. I'm going just to leave here and it's done. Cool. So if we now take a look at here, what I wanted to do, I want to get rid of this. So I created a domain and I'm going to insert a class here called user. This is my domain, right? I don't want to do that. And I'm going to create a user called uh, user and, and I'm going to have two attributes, right? One attribute name and the other attribute job. So it's going to be a private string name. And it's going to be a private string string job, right? Great. For me to create a user now and instantiate that, I need a constructor, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to code, generate, I'm going to go to constructor and I'm going to select both of them by holding either command or control. And now I have a constructor, right? Great, this is a, there is a, a good practice in Java that if you create a, a your own constructor, you need to have the public one. The, the default one, because when you don't have any construction, let's say if I'm, I don't have this, I don't have that constructor, I can create this class just by uh, using the default constructor, which takes no argument. But whenever I already have a constructor, I cannot use the default one. So I need to come here and create the default constructor. So whoever is using that class has that possibility. Cool. So awesome, I have my, my constructor here, right? So I can now create that user. What I'm going to do, I'm going to say user, user is a new user. Great. And I need to import this, right? So if I hold Alt Return or Enter, it's going to give me two options. I want the domain user, not the below user. Awesome. And I need to pass the parameters for for what I want that user to have, right? IntelliJ helps me out to figure out those parameters by holding Command P or Control P. So if I do Command P, it tells me, oh, the first argument is name, which is Rafael. This is what I have down there. And the second is job, which is engineer test. Great. So now what I can do is I can remove this and I can say, hey, this is my user. This is what I want. Awesome. So now I'm going to run this test just to make sure. And it failed. Right, failed. It says cannot serialize, serialize object because no JSON serializer found. Please put J Jackson data bind or any other of those. So one of the things that we need to know is we, now we are doing serialization and deserialization. Serialization is when you have a object, a Java object, and you are trying to transform that Java ob object into a JSON file. That is serialization. Deserialization is when you have a JSON file and you want to transform into a Java object. So this is not working because we don't have the correct dependencies. So I'm going to go here into my Chrome and I'm going to do uh, rest assure, Jackson data bind, Gradle. And I'm going to select the, the Maven repository. And here we go. I do have 3.on, this is 
when, whenever you're choosing your repository, just make sure that you are getting the correct, the newest version. This is 2018. So this is not what I want. I want, oh, and it gave me rest assured. I do not want rest assured. I, so let me remove rest assured. Jackson data bind Gradle. Great, much better. So now I do have the correct one, but then this, it gave me the uh, 2012 version. I don't want 2012 version. So I'm going to go to Jackson data bind and I'm going to choose this one, which is the newest. We have a art sheet, which is release candidate, but that is probably a, um, that's usually a better version. I'm, I, I don't want to do the better version now. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go to build and I'm going to paste here, right? So I'm not sure why they're using compile group, but uh, it's been some versions that Gradle has used implementation and test implementation instead of uh, compile and test compile. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to transform these in the same pattern that we have below, which is changing those divisions into, col uh, into double columns. Cool. So now I have a Jackson data bind. I'm going to re-execute the test and I'm going to do by holding control R, which is going to execute the last test that is already executed. So I don't need to be with the cursor in the method itself. Great, so now it gave me a different error, which is nice. No serializer found, no properties discovered to create the bean serializer. Awesome. This means that it's not able to access uh, these, these properties here. So one thing that I can do, I can change this to public and I'm going to rerun the test. And you're going to see that it worked now, right? Because I, I enabled them to, I enabled the, the serializer, the Jackson to access those, those variables, right? Uh, but this is not the Java way, right? We, we usually do not give public access to the attributes. We do that through methods. So I'm going to put this back to private and I'm going to create a get method. I'm going to do this time command N and I'm going to choose getter. So let me put the cursor down here, getter. I'm going to choose both of them. And now we created my get method. I'm going to rerun the, the, the test and it worked, great. So let's take a, a, a deeper look. Oh, let's make it fail, right? It's too much magic for us to figure out, to, to believe that it worked right away. So again, uh, I removed the L. It was expecting no L and came with L. So one of the things that uh, it happens here is, First, it matched, right? Uh, whatever I have to, to the JSON, right? So it's going to transform this name into a name and job into a job in a JSON file. And it knows it's a JSON because of the content type, right? The content type, it's what tells Jackson and Lester that this is what I want. I want a content type JSON, right? I could change this to XML and I can rerun it. And it's going to say, unable to marshal no element as an element because it's a missing XML root element. So this is already an, X, an XML error. So if I have the proper dependencies, I would be able to change whatever test that I have into XML and I can change and I can show you these uh in the near future but from right now it's a json so i'm going to rerun it and i do have already a test working so let's make a commit which is uh git add dash dash all for i want everything git commit dash m add uh jackson data bind dependency and 
a domain class for the tests. Awesome. Cool. So one of the things that I could do here is instead of doing this whole coding of getters and setters, I could use Lombok, right? But Lombok has a lot of magic going on. And I do not, I didn't want to use Lombok right now. I'm going to show in the future. But because at this moment, I would like you to understand exactly what is needed and what's going on in the code level for this to happen. Because Lombok has some magic on it. And if you don't have these basics and this understanding, uh, it'd be, it could be harder for you to understand what's happening uh, with Lombok because Lombok uses some annotation and it makes it cleaner, it makes it easier, but then you, you have to understand what's Lombok's, what Lombok is doing underneath it. So that's why I decided to create the actual code so you can actually see, and whenever I change to Lombok, it's going to make much more sense for you, okay? So this is what I wanted to show you for now. Uh, let me do my, my branch, right? So I'm going to do git checkout dash b English 03 uh, refactor and seri, serialize, serialize, great. So now I can do git push origin in my branch. And it's already there. So this is what I want to show you. Uh, thank you for watching. Please subscribe uh, if you want to, so you can see the next, you will receive notification for the next videos. Uh, if you like it, give the thumbs up. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, you can please put on the comment and you can talk, start talking there. And if you also would like to, to for me to talk about some specific topics or, or in, in, any other thing, please do put in a comment so I can also put on my backlog. Thank you.